Using your front face sample holder on a spectrometer requires more consideration than the liquid sample holder. These considerations can be split into two main areas, sample alignment or geometry and stray light. The key point to alignment is that the user must move the solid sample plane to meet the intersection or alignment point of the emission and excitation optical axes. Start by placing the front face sample holder or SC10 into your system. For the FLS and LifeSpec 2, the positioning rod parts need to be fitted carefully. Note the sample holder is reclined to prevent a direct specular reflection of the excitation beam into the emission monochromator. Powder samples can be mounted in the demountable cuvette. Solid samples come in many sizes and shapes, so some creativity is often needed. Film samples can be mounted on the small jaw clip. We previously discussed alignment. Check that the excitation beam hits the sample by using a visible beam from the xenon lamp. For a laser source, this alignment should be also checked safely. A good tip for an unknown sample is then often to excite with a high energy wavelength, say 300 nanometers, and observe the sample carefully with your eye to see if a color can be seen. This would also allow you to make a guess at the emission wavelength. After excitation and emission wavelengths are established, this information should be put into the signal rate window and a signal should be observed on EM1. After a PL signal is observed, the positioning wheel should then be moved to maximize the EM1 signal. This confirms the best alignment for the sample, excitation and emission optical axes. This wheel should be moved every time a source or sample is changed to verify the best alignment. Now let's consider stray light. Single monochromator systems do not suppress as much light as double monochromators. And with highly scattering or reflective samples, especially those excited with UV light, long wavelength pass filters should be placed between the sample and the emission monochromator to help the emission monochromator filter the excitation beam. This filter is used to block the excitation beam and the choice of the filter depends on whether an excitation or an emission scan is being measured. The stationary monochromator in each scan defines the wavelength of the filter. For an emission scan, the filter wavelength should be greater than the excitation wavelength plus 15 nanometers. And for an excitation scan, the filter wavelength should be less than the emission wavelength minus 15 nanometers. The filter is normally placed between the sample and the emission monochromator. Thank you for listening, and we hope this video has given you some knowledge of the unique considerations to be made when measuring powder, solid or film samples.